What's going on guys? Welcome to the third seven round mock draft of the season from me. At this rate, it's not looking good for me to get through all 32 teams. It's not even looking good for me to get through the first 16 teams. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run through as many of these as I can. And on April 22nd, the Monday before the true NFL draft, I'm going to go ahead and do my first live stream. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do mock draft simulators on Fanspeak, the draft network, any kind of draft simulator that you guys know of. I will sit there and I'm going to run through some live streams and make sure that we do at least something for every single team the only kicker is that can we please finally get one of these mock draft videos to hit our goal of 500 likes that's all we've got 500 likes and i will go ahead and i will set in stone that i will do a mock draft monday live stream on april 22nd and i will make sure that i do one simulation for all 32 teams at some point during the day can't wait but let's get to the jets the jets were very active in free agency so i'm glad that i did not start these before free agency started they went ahead and added CJ Mosley at linebacker, Le'Veon Bell at running back. They traded for Kalechi Osemele. They signed Jamison Crowder and Josh Bellamy to play wide receiver for them. They had Anthony Barr, and then they didn't. They also got Brian Poole from the Falcons to play cornerback. Then they re-signed some of their own guys, like Henry Anderson that they got in the trade with the Colts. Steve McClendon, a great nose tackle for them. Daryl Roberts, Jonathan Harrison, their center, and Brandon Copeland at linebacker. So those are a lot of big moves that are really going to impact the way that I make these picks in this seven-round mock draft. I have six needs for the Jets in this draft and the first one is offensive line this offensive line was pretty bad in 2018 but James Carpenter and Spencer Long are somebody else's problem now but I do like the move to get Kletchy Assembly it's not a move for the future obviously because he's gonna be 30 years old at the start of the season but it was more of a desperation move due to the state of the interior offensive line last year and it didn't cost them very much he is a plug-and-play guy that is not far removed from being one of the top guards in the league I don't care what system you run on offense you've got to protect the franchise quarterback and open lanes in the running game so this is definitely Definitely a position that I will be addressing in this mock draft. The next biggest need I have for them is edge rusher. The Jets don't have a lot of pass rushers on the roster, and I think that's why they were so ready to pay Anthony Barr whatever he wanted. Jordan Jenkins is the only guy I'd bet on being around for an extended period of time that's currently on this roster, but I do think that Terrell Basham, another Colts trade, I still think that he's got potential, and Jeremiah Tauchu could be re-signed for depth after the draft if they don't get who they want. One of the common things that I see as a need for the Jets is wide receiver, but I actually really like the duo of Robbie Anderson and Quincy Anunwa. Robbie Anderson and Sam Darnold finished the 2018 season on fire. Anderson had 23 catches for 336 yards and three touchdowns in the final four games. Adding Redskins wide receiver Jamison Crowder in the slot might be what's been missing from this offense to really open things up in the passing game for these two wide receivers. While this is a popular need to address early on for Jets fans, I think it's a little overblown considering the previous two glaring needs. Now these next three needs are kind of secondary needs. Defensive line, this really depends on their plan to transition from the 3-4 to the 4-3 eventually with Greg Williams and getting guys that can potentially play in both schemes because it doesn't make sense to draft a guy for one specific scheme right now if your plan is in fact to transition one day. Running back is still a secondary need because Le'Veon Bell has had his share of injuries over his career and he's an older running back now that's why the Steelers didn't want to pay him. Plus you can't ignore the rumors that he was out of shape during his bye season which increases the risk of injury when you just jump right back into football. Right Des? And then cornerback would be the final secondary need. Greg Williams' scheme relies on front seven pressure, and cornerbacks are plentiful in this class, so this is kind of a back burner need for me that could be filled with some undrafted free agents or some veteran cornerbacks, maybe Morris Claiborne comes back. Now these are some under the radar prospects that are currently on the Jets roster that factored into my mindset when I was going through these mock draft simulations and coming up with this ideal seven round mock draft for the Jets. And the first guy I have on my list is the college teammate of Sam Darnold, wide receiver Deontay Burnett. I think that he could be a solid slot guy for them and a good depth guy moving forward. The next guy I have on the list is defensive lineman Nathan Shepard. I really like this guy. I wasn't expecting him to go as high as the Jets select him as the third round but it just proves that they liked him and saw an opportunity to lock him up early and not let him slip through their fingers. I think that as they shift towards the 4-3, he'll be playing more inside as a three technique. And then the final guy on this list that a lot of casual fans just have forgotten about or don't know about, and that would be tight end Christopher Herndon the fourth. I thought that he had a really great rookie season, and I'm going to be targeting him as a sort of fantasy sleeper going into his sophomore year. And since I'm going for accuracy instead of flair and fun, here are a few things I tried to keep in mind when drafting as the Jets GM Mike McCagnan. The Jets run a similar offense to the 49ers in that they are a lot of zone heavy concepts. 
with a West Coast passing game. And then their defensive philosophy is going to be a hybrid 3-4 with a possible transition to the 4-3 in the future. Once again, this move is still kind of questionable to me. I'm not sure what they're trying to accomplish with this. This is all Adam Gase who can be a little bit of a mad scientist, I think. So we'll see how Greg Williams does coaching a 3-4 instead of a 4-3. And Mike McCagnan, he tends to be a best player available guy whenever it seems like there's an obvious talent left on the board, such as drafting Leonard Williams when Muhammad Wilkerson and Sheldon Richardson were still on the roster. He's not afraid to draft the small school guys, especially late in the draft. Like I said earlier, he drafted Nathan Shepard out of Fort Hayes State. That was in the third round, but he also drafted Virginia State running back Trenton Cannon, who is also a sleeper. I should have mentioned him earlier as one of the guys that is kind of under the radar on this roster. I think Mike McCagnan loves to make trades, whether it's for players or picks, like trading three second round picks in the pre-draft trade for Sam Darnold, or a sneaky steal pick of a seventh for Henry Anderson. He's really neglected drafting offensive linemen, and there's only been two drafted in the last four classes, so that's kind of a problem and is why offensive line is their biggest need right now. But he has hit on some undrafted free agent players like Robbie Anderson, and this is such a deep draft with like a record number of under classmen so I really think that there's potential for him to fill some of these needs some of those secondary needs like cornerback in the undrafted free agents draft and then here's a list of the pre-draft visits I'm not sure if the Jets are big on selecting guys that they've had in for visits but I do know that my Cowboys usually like to show their hand with these visits so I always make sure to have this list in front of me when I'm running through mock draft simulations just because you never know if one of these guys that they brought in is going to show up late in the draft for them but before we get started I want to let you guys know that my Patreon is now open to those that want to help support this channel support me and my family with our newborn twins and three-year-old daughter also my discord channel is is picking up steam a little bit this past week I've added some bots in there I've got a few more people in there we've got some good draft conversations going on every once in a while so go ahead and join that if you guys are a discord user once again I said the goal for this video is 500 likes please help me grow this channel by hitting this like button if you can't help with the patreon your like goes a long long way and I will be sure to do a live mock draft Monday on April 22nd I'll figure out what time that will be later on it might be for only a couple hours but I'm gonna make sure that I run through a bunch of simulations of mock drafts if we can hit 500 likes on this video the Jets have come out and begged for a trade down scenario to fall into their lap so that they can recoup a second round pick that they lost in the trade up for Sam Darnold last year but I'm not sure that they're gonna find a trade partner to dance with this year trade Trading down would likely be based on another team believing that the Raiders at number four are going to take their quarterback in Dwayne Haskins, and that's a hard sell for me. If the Raiders aren't taking him, then the Bucks would probably offer a much more palatable trade package for somebody trying to jump in front of the Giants. Here are the trade offers that I received running some fan speak mocks. Obviously, either of these trades would be dream scenarios, but they felt pretty unrealistic, so I'm not going to include them in here. Not many teams are going to want to give up that much draft capital in this deep of a draft class. With that said, I'm going to stay at number three. Kentucky edge rusher Josh Allen. I mentioned in my free agency mock draft that this pick is basically plan B for them with plan A following through aka Anthony Barr. Josh Allen and Anthony Barr are actually pretty similar players but I think that Josh Allen offers a little more as a pass rusher with much greater team leader qualities to him. I'm sure the Jets feel like they could trade down, grab an extra second, and end up with Montez Sweat or Brian Burns, and an extra second to pick an interior offensive line in the second round. But until something significant changes in the top five of the draft, Josh Allen is the safe pick here. In the third round, I have the Jets selecting Wisconsin offensive lineman Michael Dieter. After playing left tackle in 2017, Michael Dieter showed his versatility in 2018 and could play anywhere along the offensive line at the next level. Wisconsin is one of my favorite offensive line factories, and this is a guy with 54 starts at left tackle, left guard, and center. He's probably a day one starter at guard over Brian Winters, maybe moving over to right guard, but the flex to play anywhere along the offensive line is what makes him appealing for a team with as many holes as the Jets have. Clutchio Assembly isn't a young guy and getting an interior building block is crucial for the Jets while they have a young quarterback to build around. I toyed with adding a wide receiver with their second third round pick because I think there's some solid option here with wide receiver one skill sets such as Oregon's Dylan Mitchell, Miles Boykin, Preston Williams, or possibly Missouri's Emmanuel Hall is even still available. But I don't see wide receiver as big as a need as many do and the guys catching the ball are irrelevant if Sam Darnold doesn't have time to drop back and go through his progression. After drafting only two offensive linemen in the last four years, I think the Jets should match that number in this draft alone. 
With that said, I'm going to go ahead and give them another offensive lineman in Oklahoma offensive tackle Bobby Evans. A true offensive tackle prospect would be a nice pairing with Michael Dieter for two young offensive linemen to grow with Sam Darnold. Imagine these two both holding down the left side of the line for years to come. Right tackle Brandon Shell still has starting potential, and Kelvin Beecham was an adequate starter at left tackle last year, but both of those guys could be easily replaced by a better option, I think. Kelvin Beecham is up for a new contract in 2020 anyways, so grabbing the future left tackle sooner than later would be wise in my opinion. With the third pick on the third day of the draft, the Jets should have plenty of trade down offers here for teams that have reevaluated their board overnight and feel like they must absolutely have some guy here at the top of the fourth round. The wide receiver truthers are not going to be happy that I'm passing on the position once again here, but if this defensive transition is ever going to happen, then they're going to need some young, versatile pieces that can play in both schemes. I settled on Anthony Nelson, who's actually one of my favorite players in this draft, not just because of his first name, but because of his skill set and his just physical ability. But I also considered Miami's defensive tackle Gerald Willis here. Nelson ended up being the choice for me due to his ability to play inside and out and even in odd fronts. Imagine a defensive line in the future here with Josh Allen, Henry Anderson, Leonard Williams and Jordan Jenkins with Anthony Nelson being able to sub into any four of the positions if necessary. I really like to check out the pre-draft visit list and while checking this list out I found Syracuse wide receiver Jamal Custis. He caught my eye as a late round guy because he has definitely got the physical skill set of a wide receiver one. What he lacks in his route tree development he possesses in physical abilities. And in the seventh round, I have the New York Jets selecting Temple running back Ryquel Armstead. Le'Veon Bell should eliminate the need to draft a running back, right? Uh, very wrong in my opinion. Le'Veon Bell has had serious injury issues in the past and is reaching an unforgivable age for running backs. I view this position similarly to the wide receivers. The top guys are good, if not potentially great. So overreacting and using a high pick on one when there's glaring needs along the trenches just doesn't make sense. But getting quite a few late round and undrafted free agents in here could be a very valuable move in return for them. Like I said, this is a team that their number one wide receiver was an undrafted free agent, so they understand the value in it. Reichwell Armstead is an intriguing running back that the Jets have already brought in for a visit, and he could actually play a little fullback and be their power running back while Le'Veon Bell just tries to mask the offensive line deficiencies. Now, a lesson that I learned from doing my 49ers seven round mock draft is going over the positions that I neglected. So I want to address the positions that I did not draft because the Jets don't have that many picks anyways. And the first one is cornerback. Morris Claiborne is another free agent that could still come back. And there's a lot of money invested in Jermaine Johnson to be your number one corner. And I mentioned earlier that Greg Williams relies on bringing pressure. So cornerbacks are less important than the front seven. And I, I think that we're seeing their positional value decrease anyways due to the NFL rules favoring wide receivers so in this draft I don't have the Jets looking at cornerback as that high of a need the wide receiver I mentioned that Robbie Anderson has already got wide receiver one abilities Quincy Nunwa is as good of a number two wide receiver as you're going to find and there's not a lot of developmental wide receivers on the roster but there's also not a lot of opportunities for a high draft pick to come in and make an instant impact on this team this draft is deep at wide receiver but with it seeming like such an obvious need and yet only using a late round pick will make bringing in some good undrafted free agents a lot easier. If Sam Darnold is what you think he is, he's going to make the wide receivers in Adam Gase's offense and not the other way around. And then finally, we've got linebacker. CJ Mosley was paid the big bucks for a reason, and the Jets shouldn't spend more than a sixth or seventh round picked on the position. Darren Lee should be given another chance in Greg Williams' scheme, especially with them eventually transitioning to a 4-3. I think he's a way better fit in that scheme, but he could be moved during the draft for a late round pick, which in turn could give them another pick to add something they feel like is a better fit for the scheme at linebacker. But until that point, I'm keeping Darren Lee, getting my money's worth out of CJ Mosley, and picking up some undrafted free agents at linebacker, and maybe some veterans if necessary. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. Once again, the like goal is 500 likes on this video. Please help me hit the goal so that I can do a live stream mock draft Monday. I might even set my webcam up to put my face in there for you guys so we can sit around and talk about the draft on April 22nd. Go ahead and check out my latest mock draft while you're here, and I will see you all in the next video.